All right, Railway Empire 2. Let's go do tutorial, fulfillment, changing trains, and then banking. And personnel, all three of them. Go right ahead. They should be uh, very educational, obviously. And we'll, we'll learn a lot, so it'll be all good. Greetings. This lesson is about how you can recognize the needs of a city and use them to your advantage. I'll also show you how to invest in the production of goods to ensure additional transport and growing cities, which in turn leads to even more transport. Okay, good to know. Open the city dialogue of Sacramento and then the supply and demand list. This list shows you, <laughs> among other things, how high the stock of all goods is and how high the current demand by citizens and factories is. Okay, red box, but the red box is demand. This one, just the box is stock. As an example, look at grain. The city needs grain, yet the supply is at zero. This is because the nearest grain farm is too far away and is virtually unsupplied by traditional transportation. The same is true for lumber. So with the help of new rail lines, we could improve the goods coverage of the city. Okay, that's good. For corn, however, there is some supply. Here, a corn farm is nearby and goods are transported via road. Ah, we a should new break rail them. line would generate revenue, but would not improve the city's fulfillment of demand until the city has grown too large for traditional transportation. Okay, good to know. Now, close the list again and look for suitable businesses to improve the city's fulfillment of demand so that the city can grow. To the north of Sacramento, there is lumber, and in the northeast, there is grain available. Now build a station at both farms and connect them to Sacramento, preferably with double tracks and a gridiron. Okay, let's do this one here. And then let's just do two tracks here. Okay, that one's pretty good. It's cheap, actually. Same parallel. I think that one's good too. Not that much. We're gonna do gridiron on both sides. There we go. Let's go in both ways. Now the other thing is this piece. This one I think is trickier because there's a lot of trees. And that's really not good. I don't think you just cut through them. So let's, let's figure out if we can do this for cheap. Hold shift, by the way, to do that. One million. This need to. This is not a roller coaster, people. I guess that's fine. It's really expensive. There we go. That doesn't really change much for us. Curb is too tight. Okay, you got it down to 800k. I think that's good enough here. Oh! You want to compensate them? Yes. Don't forget to also set track directions and build supply towers. Then set up one rail line for each good so that they can be delivered to Sacramento. 
We will continue uh -oh. once the first goods arrive in Sacramento. Did we do this wrong? Oh no. Uh oh. I hope they gave us all that money back. Okay. Is this gonna work for us? One million. Curved section. This is good. This is good. Okay, it's fine. It's expensive, but it's fine. I honestly probably would have done switches here, but I think the game would want you to do that. Farewell. Okay. There we go. Crazy train. Okay, cool. Oh, I did that, didn't I? Oh, okay, he wants us to actually... From here to here. Uh, we could just do Derwent. We're gonna do freight. And then here to here. This is fine. Okay. Did I mess this one up too? Hang on. This to this. Back to here. Oh, I think it just does it actually goes both ways. Look at that, going under a tunnel. Got a bunch of lumber. Excellent. Select Sacramento again and watch how the city's fulfillment of demand improves. Since grain and lumber are in fairly high demand by the city, these two commodities also have a higher impact on demand coverage. Observe how the new supplies increase the goods coverage. If it's above 60%, a city grows. If it falls below 40%, it shrinks. Okay. Let's wait until the city reaches 40,000 citizens. We can look around a bit in the meantime. Okay, right there. Fulfillment of demand. About to hit 60%. I mean, we can connect a bunch of stuff here. Wow. Uh oh. Why did this train complete its last tour without freight? Small breakdown. Did we build a supply tower? Maybe we need to do a maintenance post. There we go. Get maintained. This is Sacramento. Of 
40,000 citizens. Close. Elevation profile, popularity, reliability. Oh, we could ride along. Oh, would you look at that? We should be close, right? Oh, we need a three exit. Come on, people. I can build more to other places. Okay, terminal to San Francisco. We have one freight train. Are you just not getting anything? That's one thing. Hmm. We're almost there. Reacts, I think, is the fastest. Faster if you zoom out, too. Oh, there's a lot of people waiting for transport here. We should really build, like... A track here. Cash actually, we don't have that cash. Hmm. I guess if you go into that, it pauses it. Don't want. Come on. Excellent. Sacramento has reached a new level. When a city grows, this has many effects. The need for goods increases, more types of goods are demanded, more industries can be constructed, and special buildings become available. Okay. Another industry can now be constructed in Sacramento. Beer would be good because grain is needed as raw material for it. Besides, San Francisco also needs beer, and there already exists a rail line. So open the construction menu and select the breweries. Now place the new industry in Sacramento inside the inner city area. This doesn't Make matter. sure that the new building complex doesn't get in the way of your future construction project. For okay. example, you can't lay tracks through factory complexes. All right, let's put it here. Very good. Now leave the construction menu again and select the new industry. Okay. Here you will see some info about your new industry. The rotating gear shows that the production is running. But if raw materials are missing or the export warehouse is overflowing, production stops. This decreases the utilization and consequently your profit. If the work stands still for a long time, you will also lose money. Wow, okay, I guess it realize we own that. Same city or any other city that can be reached by rail. So you can assume that your rail line to San Francisco will be used to transport beer. If one day the production of your industry is no longer adequate, you can enlarge it by increasing the level. This will also make your industry yield more profit, but you'll probably earn the most from transport of goods. Okay. Now select a rural business, because I'd like to show you that you can also buy this business. Oh, you can? You can acquire any rural or city business as long as it is not owned by one of your competitors. That's wild. This starts an auction in which all competitors can participate, and the highest bidder gets the business. Start an auction now. 
Yeah. Can we do an auction for this? Okay, fine. Oh my goodness. Very good. Now try to acquire this rural business. Excellent. One last thing. Open the flow of goods display. Flow of goods. The origin of travelers' mail and goods is displayed here. Oh, that's as interesting. Well as where they are transported to. This is very useful if you're looking for a specific farm, for example, or want to know which transport routes you could take over. Oh, wow. Okay. How, how does that make sense? Why is it pointing to places where we haven't been? Down here, you will see explanations about the flow of goods. Now select different goods and move your focus to rural businesses and cities to see different information and the flow of goods. When you're ready, you can then exit this tutorial at any time. Oh, I see. Lumber only comes from here. Okay. All right. Let's continue. Hi. In this lesson, I want to explain how passengers, mail, and freight can change trains. This is useful because it means you need fewer rail lines and you can easily distribute goods from central stations to all directions. Now select Sacramento, and there, passengers and mail. Here you can see the destinations passengers and mail have from Sacramento. Right now, that's just San Francisco because it only mentions destinations that can be reached entirely by rail. However, this does not mean that these goods choose only direct connections. <laughs> Indeed, passengers and mail may change trains in cities and at rural stations with hotels if there is no shorter way, and if the way by rail is at most twice as long as the direct way. Now, let's try this out. What? Okay. Now, build a station in Reading and connect the city to your station at the clearing. Feel free to use new tracks there. Then, create a new rail line that runs from the clearing to Reading. As soon as lumber arrives in Reading, we will continue. Okay, Reading is here. Oh, we don't have a... Uh... Probably easiest here this way. Okay. From clearing to reading. Should also do this to here. Okay. It's three exit. It should just go, I think. There it is. What did it have? It didn't have anything. Amazing. Uh, let's see. So it's there now. Oh, okay, it's transporting from Reading to Clearing. From Clearing to Reading, they don't need... Yeah, because... I get it. That makes sense. Clearing is not a city. Ah, there we go. Look at all that lumber. Here we go. Outstanding. Now. So that the passengers and mail can change trains at the clearing, you need a hotel at the station. 
but you haven't researched it yet. Therefore, open the research diagram and unlock the hotel. This one. Very good. Now select the station at the clearing and expand it with the hotel. Oh, okay. Is that so that's what we're doing? Exactly. Now passengers and mail can change at the station. Open the overview, passengers and mail, in Sacramento again, and you'll notice that passengers and mail can now get to Reading via the station with the hotel. Maybe it will take a while for the new route to be registered. Then we'll oh. just wait. Okay. So, can they get there? Okay, let's see. Uh, train station. Are we bleeding cash here, people? Passengers and mail. Can they get there? They're not going. Let's uh, tackle through array lines here. I think it's because we don't have a locomotive from... It's basically just getting going one way here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So... Click this again. I click Sacramento, please. They can't get there, though. Hmm. I need to build a switch. Logged here though, isn't it? You know what? It's fine. How much is this? A lot of money that we do not have. Does this work? See, so it should show up now. Got Sacramento to Reading. See how stuck we get. This guy's going back. Yeah, I think this is actually better. We do this. That's how do we deal? It should be going. It should be going.
just doing passengers here. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> There's a problem here. I think we need to build uh Maintenance post. There we go. <laughs> it should show up now, right? Hotels, by the way, are only required at rural stations because in cities, passengers and mail can always change trains. Freight can also be transferred from one rail line to another at stations, but there must always be a warehouse for this, because freight takes up a lot of space. Okay, cool. Now let's try it out. For this, unlock the warehouse within the research diagram and expand the station at the clearing with the warehouse. <laughs> clearing? Warehouse. Unlike the hotel, the warehouse needs to be adjusted to the goods that are to be transferred here. Therefore, select the constructed warehouse and instruct it to take in the goods, meat, beer, and cloth. You don't have to specify a quantity. Uh, meat, beer, cloth. Okay. <laughs> oh, oops. That's not cloth. Oh, oops. Meat, beer. You gotta click it. Cloth. Very good. The goods selected by you can now change the rail line at the warehouse. Note, the goods in the warehouse do not belong to you because the warehouse <laughs> only serves as a stopover for changing trains. All goods already have a fixed destination. Okay, yeah, that's nice. As with travelers and mail, Freight is only shipped by a business if the destination can be reached by rail. For example, the meat industry in Sacramento can now ship meat to Reading by rail, knowing that the meat will reach its destination via the warehouse. Wait. Sacramento to Reading, okay. Now feel free to look at how the goods transfer at the clearing. You may also need to increase the number of trains to transport all the new goods. Then, finish this chapter whenever <laughs> at your own pace. I think we're good here. Greetings. Now we'll move on to banks and personnel. Loans, stock trading, buying up competitors, personnel management, and sabotage. We'll start right away once you've opened the company dialogue. Banks and personnel. Here you can see some data about your company on the left and on the right side, the current company value and how it's calculated. Okay. The results of the last four quarters are displayed here. The last quarter is on the left. Here you can see which companies are currently competing in the transportation business and how much these companies are worth. Each company, including yours, is a public stock company that received its initial funds from shareholders. Therefore, you can buy your competitor's shares as well. Oh, we can do that? Once you have acquired all the shares of a competitor, you can merge with them and the competitor disappears. But be careful. If a competitor gains value faster than you, they will also try to buy up the shares of your company and kick you out of the race. Buy some competitors' shares now. Okay. It's a bad limit. There is quite a bit more information about mergers, but you can take a look at that at your leisure by opening the tips and tricks section. Here you will find more information about each topic. If you open the tips from a dialogue, you jump directly to the right place. 
Okay, that's nice. Here you can buy shares of different markets and issue company bonds to take out a loan. The higher your company value, the higher the bond's value. Now buy some stock and issue a bond. Okay, buy a little bit. Okay. In the last section, you can see all kinds of statistics and company developments. Look around a bit, then close the dialogue to continue. Now, let's take a look at the personnel. Open the corresponding dialogue. In this dialogue, you can change basic settings for the four different personnel areas of your company. The first area is for the engineer. Oh, okay. We can adjust these. Your trains are on the move 24 hours a day. With a daily work time of eight hours, each train needs three engineers. If you increase the work time, for example, you will need fewer engineers. But the quality of the work will decrease. Okay, obviously. How many of the available positions can actually be filled depends on how much you invest in your employees. How well each individual works and how many positions are filled ultimately determines the efficiency of an area. Efficient engineers, for example, reduce the maintenance requirements of your locomotives. Now take a look at the three other personnel areas. They all work similarly, but each has different effects. One special stoker. feature is your security personnel. Not only do they affect mail and freight revenues, but they can also prevent sabotage when effectively used. Okay, that's interesting. Did not know that. As always, you can find more information about personnel in the tips and tricks dialogue. But now, let's turn to the last area, the saboteurs. Do we can sabotage? You can invest money into searching for saboteurs to damage your competitor's business. The more money you invest, the faster you'll find more experienced saboteurs. Okay. Start the search for a saboteur now. Go ahead and invest the highest amount. Okay, highest amount. Normally, you would have to wait for a while now, but I'll take the liberty to speed up the search. As soon as you have found a saboteur, you can use them. Now close the dialogue and select something that belongs to your competitor north of Reading. For example, a station. Then order the sabotage. North of Reading. Over here. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at these guys. Okay. Nice. That's how it's done. Whether you want to sabotage your competitors or not, of course, is your decision. It's not important, but you should expect that your competitors will not be squeamish with you. So make sure you have enough security personnel. Okay. That also brings this lesson to an end. One more thing. As long as your business is small, you don't necessarily need to worry about your staff. At some point, however, you'll have 50 or more employees in one area, and you'll incur significant costs. By then, you should optimize your staff. Okay, understood. I think that was it for those three tutorial missions. I think we're ready to get into it now.